is the biggest hurdle I see for any young retiree prior to age 65. And that's healthcare costs. Huge. Huge. So there are ways that you can um, uh, mitigate that. So if you keep your household income below, uh, and I'm using rough figures, uh, $70,000 a year for a married couple, then you would qualify for the Affordable Health Care Act. Affordable Health Care Act will subsidize your your Medicare, or I'm sorry, your uh, health care premiums. Welcome to the Wiser Retirement Podcast. We believe the best financial advice should always be conflict-free. I'm your host, Casey Smith. Guiding you to financial freedom today is my co-host, Shauna Theriot. Good Hello. morning. Good morning. So we have uh, big news this Tuesday early morning. Uh, we have got, I heard this news? Oh, you have. We we got noticed last week that um, uh, Missy, who's not here today, she's out watching her son play golf. He plays golf at Rhodes College. Uh, we're watching. Uh, anyway, uh, she uh, was awarded um, at the, one of the best financial planners in the country by Money. Yeah. So Money Magazine, right? Yes. In, in connection with the Financial Planning Association. So we are very excited for her. Absolutely proud of her. If you want to book a consultation with the world's best financial planner, you can do that by reaching out to her through our website online. But, uh, you know, my office is right next to the media room. And sometimes if, when the air is not running, it usually is, but when the air is not running, I can hear things. And I could have sworn I heard her, uh, you know, someone say congratulations. I, I could have sworn I heard her say, here's the deal. I'm the best there is plain and simple. <laughs> I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence and nobody can hang with my stuff. You know, I'm just a big, hairy, that's kind of awkward, right? American winning machine. If you're not first, you're last. I'm pretty sure I heard her say that. I'm pretty sure she didn't. <laughs> and she would be mortified if she thought you said her, she said that. <laughs> we love you, Missy. Uh, that was Ricky Bobby and Taldega Nights. And uh, I don't think he was in the wiser office, but um no, I heard that. I don't think so either. I, I heard that. I saw, I saw this like on a, on a, one of my Instagram scrolls or something. It's like, Oh, I got to work that into a pod. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She would not be saying that. <laughs> oh my goodness. We can, uh, we can make sure she listens to the beginning of this episode. Uh, anyway, congratulations, Missy. We're proud of you. Absolutely. Um, we have the best team in finance. I've said that on multiple podcasts and I'm, I'm really proud of uh, her. It's not just, she would say it's not just her. It takes a group and, and uh, she's very humble. And that's true. It takes a team to yes. make all this work. Um, I mean, we have good grief. Uh, I think there's like 40 plus financial plans open right now. Yes. About four new clients on average come in every single week. So it's a, it's a busy place here at uh, Wiser Global Headquarters. Absolutely. So, um, Happy to be here. Well, you didn't uh, tune in to hear about Ricky Bobby, probably. Uh, you probably tuned in to hear about strategies for early retirement and long-term security. And we've done some things about this before. I think there's a lot of people that it's true of anything. There's a lot of people that want something. Yeah. But you have to be able to work to to do it, right? Oh, yeah. Everybody wants to be successful at something, but typically it doesn't come easy. And there's a lot of sacrifice that you have to do to get to that point. And I think early retirement in this day and age with this inflation uh, I think that's probably the case too. Um, there is a movement out there called fire. I think it's kind of dying. I don't hear dying a little bit. I don't hear as much about it. Um, I've honestly never heard of it. Are you serious? I haven't. We, before we, I, I think, started reviewing for this, <laughs> we had, uh, it's a few, a few years ago. Um, we had, I think a prospect say, Hey, I'm part of the this fire thing. And, and well, you know, that stands for financial independence, retire early, right? Yes, that's okay. correct. So the, that's the first I had really caught on to it. But yeah, these people want to be done by like 45, 40, um, maybe, you know, 50 would be the, would be the top end of yeah. that. Yeah. And it's very possible to do that. Um, I think that you're going to have to forego some things. Uh, how does, how does the saying objects. go? <laughs> if you, if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. If you do what is le easy, your life will be hard. So if you sacrifice yeah. now, and you do what's hard now, then right. you have more choices in the future, basically. Yeah, exactly. And more options. And sometimes it's just knowing that you are retirable, right? So it's like, can I do this? And yeah. then you decide maybe not to. You just know that you are retirable at some point. 
Yeah, then there's, there's lots of cases where people come in and hate their job and we're able to show them that they could retire in the next year, today, even. And yeah. Then they, but they keep working for sometimes five more years because right. they know they don't have to be there anymore. Exactly. It kind of changes your <laughs> your step and puts a little pep right. in your step. It's like, well, I get to be here if I want to be here. I don't have to be here. And so it's a little bit of a different mindset. They need me. I don't need them. It changes everything. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. So obviously to get started with this, you're going to have to uh, save aggressively and very early. So you're probably going to want to be driving a higher mileage car, uh, you know, you're going to live in a smaller house, right? You're going to, uh, maybe not going on as many vacations or maybe any at all, right. Yeah. At the beginning. Yeah. Um, so you, you, you want to be putting away a very, very high percentage, uh, of your, of your savings. Now, I guess it, it, we talk about this further down, but the caveat is it's important as to where your savings is going to, because if you really wanted to be done by 40, you're going to have to not have money into in a 401k plan, all your money, I should say. Right. And not have uh, all your money in IRAs because you can't withdraw <laughs> until your <laughs> IRAs uh, are 401k 55 um, and other, in other cases, just 59 and a half. So, and there, there is ways to tap that, of course, that 72T. I know you did a show on that. There's, yeah. there's ways to get at it if you need it without penalty. 72Ts can, they have some roadblocks, I feel like. But, they do. Um, but yeah, so it, it's it's important that you put money in the right place. And typically that's going to be in a, just a brokerage account. So if, if you're saving aggressively, you'd be maxing out your 401k. Uh, most likely you could put it into the Roth side. If you're if you're making a solid household income, I'd say you want to be putting that pre-tax to save, to save on taxes. Yeah. But additional money would be going into a brokerage account. So you can live off that money until you can access retirement funds right. in your in your older years. So the next recommendation is to create multiple income streams. So what is, what is your idea of creating multiple income streams? Because I always go to real estate. Oh, that's one of them, real <laughs> estate. I mean, you can do side jobs, side hustles. Um, I also like income stream from like investments, dividends, interest, right. things like that. So if you have dividends, interest, that could go towards your liquidity for spending. I mean, the biggest thing is understanding what you spend. So obviously, if you're saving a lot, mm -hmm. then because people ask us all the time, well, how much do I need to retire? And the answer is it depends what you spend, right? Yeah. And so if you think about what you're spending is an inflation, et cetera, um, you know, creating any any income streams such as social security be, would be later if you're retiring, but if you have access to pensions, which some do, most don't now, right. um, dividends, interest on your investments, those are good income streams to help, you know, reduce how much you have to actually pull from principal, if you will. Um, and then- you know, it could be, um, real estate is a good one with. The thing about real estate, if you're trying to retire early, you're going to have a mortgage. So you're going to have to net positive income, which is, I think is difficult to do right now because yeah. the, the price of the homes are so high. high. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the rent has rates. gone up, but rent hasn't gone up and interest rates are high. Hasn't gone up enough to, to create a bigger margin there. So, right. I, I think that's difficult other, other than you're going to buy it, you're going to rent it out and you know that in 30 years, which is going to be much longer than the time span they're looking to retire, that eventually gets paid off and it becomes an income stream. Right. Right. So, right. so there's that side to it, but you also have to worry about maintaining it. And I, I don't know. I don't know how that works into early retirement unless, unless you have smaller properties, that's always possible. If, if you had a, they still exist. An eighty thousand dollar house. <laughs> <laughs> it does exist. It doesn't exist in Metro Atlanta, right? But there are areas um, that I've been to that I've been like, "Wow, you could buy a house here for eighty thousand dollars." That's crazy, right? Uh, and most, that would cash flow pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> Mississippi, Columbus, Georgia has a has a large segment of eighty, ninety thousand, hundred hundred thousand dollar homes. Uh, I've never seen them. I yeah. just when I start when I search and I pan out and I go, "Where is a hundred thousand dollar home?" Uh, it's in places that you probably don't want to live right. honestly, but you're not living there. You're just renting it out. Yeah. yeah. So, so maybe if you attack something like that differently, but buying a uh, $500,000 total home in Marietta, Georgia to rent out, that's doesn't not sound a good like rental a, property. Does it sound like a good no, idea? No, not that price all. point. No, uh, especially at six and a quarter. Actually, you have to add a point for rental for investment property. So seven and a quarter mm -hmm. uh, percent interest. That doesn't sound like a good opportunity. No, I agree. Point, so I agree. Um, but I, I, I would, you know, you think mul multiple income streams, I, I go back to, uh, you're probably not gonna have a pension. 
Um, so you're gonna have your savings paying, paying you, you're not gonna have social security until, uh, 67. Um, so, so really if you worked like a part-time job, which some of these people talk about, they say, well, I'm gonna quit this job, but I'll do some part-time freelance stuff. Right. So that can create, but are you really retired if you're doing part-time freelance stuff? No, unless you do something you enjoy doing and <laughs> right. it's not, you know, something that brings right. you passion or starting think, a small business or something. I think that's the key here, honestly, is like find something you enjoy doing and it's not work. What I makes mean, you happy? I, I spend some days 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. here and I don't go home going, I'm sick of this place. No, of so, course, it's your dream. You built you it, know. of course. Um, All right, so let's be strategic about withdrawals. We hinted on this earlier, but how are you going to withdraw money? So there's a lot of times people have enough money to retire early, but the problem is they have it in the wrong places. So if you take out money prior to age 55 out of your 401k plan, you're going to um, incur a 10% penalty right. on that withdrawal right. in addition to paying income tax. If you uh, do something like roll the money to, into an IRA, when you leave the company, that makes it worse. You have to wait till 59 and a half, and, a half right. and you have to pay 10% penalty. So then that goes back to creating buckets. You probably should be maxing out a 401k anyway, if you're going to retire, retire early, but you need to be calculating how you're going to get to age 55 or 59 and a half by um, making sure you have enough in, in a brokerage account that you're, that you're putting away. And there's a lot of uh, strategies you can do with that. Uh, in fact, our, our flight path program uh, for smaller investors uh, does t what they call tax loss harvesting. So we have three different ETF models that have um, uh, the same holdings, basically. It's just the Vanguard S&P 500 versus a State Street versus a BlackRock S&P 500. It's all the same underlying holdings for the most part. All right. Uh, so you, if you have a loss in like a 2022 year where everything's down, uh, the software will automatically sell out of one portfolio into another portfolio that performs very similarly, like within, we're talking fractions of a percent similarly. Uh, so by doing that, you're creating tax credits uh, for, to write off in your tax return. So you can write off to, up to $3,000 a year, but... Um, or offset unlimited capital gains. Correct. Yeah. So the idea here is if you're able to write off more than 3000 it carries forward. Maybe you can carry enough credits in the future uh, to be able to sell those gains because those would be large gains eventually. Right. And, and so it's very powerful when you have that brokerage account and then you've been investing, investing, and you have all these unrealized gains. And when you start needing liquidity because you're retiring yeah. or retiring early, you need to start selling them. And so those credits will help offset the taxes. Correct. The, the credits from the losses and it, they're, they're temporary losses. You're not, you're not, you're just realizing the losses versus just staring them at them on paper. Right. So having a tax investment strategy is going to be uh, important. And then if you are in a situation where you have age um, uh, 55 or 59 and a half is an issue, the ha IRS has what they call 72T. I've never done a 72T on a 401k plan, so I assume it can, it's probably just IRAs. I believe it's IRAs. So you'd roll to an IRA and you have to take out substantial and equal payments for five years or until age 59 and a half, whichever is longer. longer. So if you did it at 55, uh, you'd have to go to 60 you did it at 59, <laughs> you'd yeah. have to, you have, you'd have, you have to go to 64. Right. Right. Or, uh, yeah, 64. So it, sometimes it's better just to pay the penalty for a short time period. Then you have full access to your money. Cause what you're doing is you're locking up your money in that case. Right. You, you can't take you extra withdrawals right. or if you do, everything's going to have to get uh, a penalty assigned to it. So you don't want to, you don't want to be, um, in that. Are you curious why annuities keep coming up as a potential investment option? People are often told that annuities can effectively mitigate investment risks and help secure their financial future. However, annuities often benefit the salesperson and might not be the best choice for you as a consumer. To learn more about the various types of annuities, the negatives of owning them, and better investment alternatives, we have a free ebook on our website just for you. To download our ebook, Buyer Beware, Why Do They Keep Trying to Sell You That Annuity? Simply click the link in the episode notes or visit wiserinvestor.com slash guides. Now let's get back to the episode. Uh, the next thing is the biggest hurdle I see for any young retiree prior to age 65, and that's healthcare costs. Huge, huge. So 
there are ways that you can um, uh, mitigate that. So if you keep your household income below, uh, and I'm using rough figures, uh, $70,000 a year for a married couple, then you would qualify for the Affordable Health Care Act. Affordable Health Care Act will subsidize your your Medicare, or I'm sorry, your uh, health care premiums. They will. So uh, I don't know. I can't give you an exact quote on what that looks like. I, probably it would average out to be what, three, $400 a month, I think, total out of pocket. Yeah. So for the premium. The, yeah. The, pre- the premiums can be substantial just depending on. And if your income's high enough, like you said, then there's no subsidies. And so the, here's the challenge though. Th- this and this sometimes this is where you just have to pay for it because you, you can use, first of all, you retire early, you can be mm-hmm. on COBRA for 18 months. Okay. Which so is expensive. It, it is, but it's sometimes it's cheaper than if, you know, than the marketplace right. for healthcare. So when you apply there, there's really no other place to get it. You apply to the marketplace, but whether you, we want individuals to have money and brokerage money. They're going to have dividends interest. We want those multiple income streams. So they're yeah. probably going to have income that's high enough that they can't get subsidies. I, yeah, ideally, yes. Right. Um, so, Or we have retirees now that have to keep their income at 70000 Right. Right. Which is challenging. So. I, you know, I've had situations where someone retired early and they had money all in the 401ks and they just had, you know, they had a few hundred thousand in the brokerage and we put in a zero interest bearing account because the the subsidies were higher. The the, the credits that you yeah. got from the government were higher than the interest you could even earn on the cash that you needed to spend in the next few years. Right. So that wouldn't account for IRA money. So if most of your money is in IRA. Right. Then, so, then so that, that, that helps. So we're as long as you're not taking distributions. Correct. Or you're so, doing Roths. Or you're taking no more than seventy thousand dollars in distribution. Right. Um yeah. So you, you just have to be really careful with with how you um approach that. Uh, if you don't have anything, we typically budget six hundred dollars a month per per person, so twelve hundred dollars a month is right. what's our default in our in our planning software. Um, I don't I don't think that the healthcare that you want necessarily is going to be in the ACA, especially in Georgia, but it's probably but it's better than nothing. Yeah, it's usually catastrophic, so, so it's not. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that is the biggest thing is bridging till Medicare age, all of those premiums and all of the healthcare costs potentially. Hopefully you're healthy and you're retired early and, you know, but still the cost of healthcare is just really high. Right. Um, prepare for the unexpected. So, <laughs> you know, you're young enough, nothing really bad has happened health wise or any other way. I mean, heck, you're retiring early. It must be looking pretty good, right? Right. But financially, you're not invincible. So you need to be ready for the new roof, the new car, the all the big expensive things that as an employee, you could probably handle much easier than uh, not having income. Like retirement income is a little different. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, so I would say that you probably going to need. I don't know. I would say two to five years worth of expenses in cash. Yeah. And I would just want to have a buffer. So when we run plans, we look at probability of success, right? And so, Mm. you know, if it's right on the line, it's still retirable, but there's just not a lot of buffer there for a market to go down. Or if you have those one-off expenses that are unplanned or, you know, life happens, right? And now if you're retiring early, you're living hopefully longer and you need the money to last longer. Um, you know, so it's, it's really important that you have, I would think a good solid buffer going into retirement, especially if you're looking at, you know, 50 years of retirement, that's a long time to sustain you, Yeah. you know, looking at long-term care, looking at all of those options, uh, staying flexible and adapt. So obviously I, I don't think you just go into the sunset floating away in a sailboat like they have in the commercials. <laughs> I think you have to be uh, oh, sticking with the st- sailboat analogy, scanning the horizon, looking for trouble, right? <laughs> so you'd want to um, be, you know, updating your financial plan once a year, make sure everything is going the way it's supposed to. Yeah. The further away you get from an employment, I think the harder it is to get reemployed. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What have you been doing the last 10 years? You know, you're <laughs> probably not using Word and Excel and all the basic things, AI, AI. Yeah. what's AI? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chat GPT who, um, yeah, you're probably not using those things. So you have to stay relevant. 
Uh, so it's really hard to go back to work after, after such a long break. Um, I think I'll add another category that, that wasn't on our show notes here. I, I, I think it's it, for people who want to do this is, is, is goal setting. And you're going to have to be hyper-focused on, on doing this. Um, and it's not all just about saving. We, we can't forget about our entrepreneurs too. There's people who are building things um, that maybe don't have or have average income, but someday they're going to sell something. And that takes planning too. Um, you know, tax planning for oh, one yeah. thing, uh, setting, setting up your business to be able to tax efficiently transfer. Uh, so you have more in your pocket to be able to be retired or take that long, take that long break before you're looking for the next, next thing. Right. Um, I think that too, you have to realize, I think we're all made to work that we are, at least we're all made to have purpose. Doesn't right. mean you're working for income necessarily. We're all made to grow. So I would make sure that if this is what you want to do, that what is your, what is your purpose? And a lot of times we see people just doing like heavy traveling. Right. Um, and that's what their, that's what their purpose is, but you don't do that forever. At yeah. some point you've covered everything, right? Right. right. <laughs> or you slow down because of healthcare, you know, health issues health and things issues, like that. Yeah. Right. Just being, being tired or, or whatever. But when you, when you think about setting a goal to do this, you know, what are your, what are your steps? I think that one is going to be eliminating debt. You have to be, I just don't see how you do this with carrying debt. No, no, no not unless, not unless you're retiring with, you know, 10 plus million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and that's an exaggeration. You can do it less and carry some debt. Sure. But I think you'd want to be debt free um, for probably the most people who are listening to this who want to be done. Um, and that that's going to take some sacrifice. So then after you become debt free, then you focus on building, building your, your wealth. Right. Um, Not but locking you're it up in things. I don't, I'm again, correct. I, I, people may flock to annuities because that incomes, we, you know, we, you know, we're right, against true. that. It hurts your growth and your upside and it locks up your money and, you know, things like that. Stay away from that. So I think the, well, all right. So what you have to realize is when you're setting goals that you can't, you can't say, I want to put max out my 401k. I want to pay a little extra of my debt. I'm going to pay a little, add a little bit more to my brokerage account. You can't take a shotgun approach to it. You're going to be hyper-focused. Um, you gotta, you gotta charge for like a rhinoceros <laughs> uh, and there's a book about that. So Dave Ramsey, Dave Ramsey's, uh, reading list. It's a really short red book. Uh, it's, it's called rhinoceros like success. And, and his whole thing is he analyzes rhinoceroses, which is silly, but, um, but they don't like run around like a bird chasing somebody. They lower their head and they charge straight ahead and they run and then they you know, you see it on like the nature channel or something, you know, they were charged and then they kind of like, Oh, I missed. And then they turn back around and they lower the head and they charge again. That's how you have to go after goals. You have to say debt free. And then everything, every ounce of your being is focused on that. Right. And then once you achieve that goal, you move to the next goal. So I think that's really important in doing this. You can't just do a sprinkle a little here and sprinkle a little there. That makes sense. Yeah. No, it makes great sense. Um, and you got to stay in good shape because you know, you got to be in good shape. Yeah. Right. Yes, you do. Because you have to <laughs> absolutely, you have to lead yourself well in all areas, you know? Um, yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to be doing all that and stressed and then sick and then have all the healthcare issues and all the expense of that. Right. And what's the purpose of that? Exactly. So. Exactly. I mean, I've met so many people that want to retire early because they hate their jobs. So I part, part of me goes back to, well, why not find a career that you enjoy? Right. And maybe, maybe part of, Part of it is becoming debt free and 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 saving money, but also maybe that allows you to retool yourself to do something that you you find more purpose in. That, well, and sometimes it's even just changing who you work for. True. You yeah. know your environment. If it's not a good environment, you can create your own culture around you, but change your environment. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. No, that's take your talent true. somewhere else. Yeah, I think that was. Um, I think that was one of Missy's quotes. Uh, when our, when our group conversation, wasn't it? She's, she's like, I just didn't realize that I could be in this industry and I didn't have to be miserable. Mm. And I thought, man, how sad is that to yeah. be stuck in such a horrible situation? Yeah. <laughs> and realize that finally you she realized oh, I could find another job. It could be okay. Right. Well, and being somewhere where you're appreciated and you know, your talents, you get to use your talents and you feel, you know, purpose. Right. That's true. 
Right. Not, she, now she's not just a financial planner. She's an award-winning financial planner. That's right. <laughs> I really am proud of her. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully this helped you um, looking for uh, if you're looking for early retirement and long term security, they they have to go together. And hopefully these are some tips you can take away. Uh, thanks for listening to today's episode. If you're interested in learning more about Wiser Wealth Management or want to schedule a consultation to meet with one of our fiduciary financial advisors, you can do so by going to wiserinvestor.com or you can click the link in the episode notes. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening to a Wiser Retirement Podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening. That way you don't miss any new episodes. We'd also appreciate if you could leave a rating and review. If you have any questions about anything that was discussed today, head to wiserinvestor.com and reach out. This episode was produced by Rachel Dotson. This podcast is strictly for informational purposes only and is not to be considered as investment advice or solicitation to buy or sell any financial products, securities, digital assets, or any other investment vehicles or a basis to make any financial decisions. Wiser Wealth Management Incorporated is a registered investor advisor with the SEC. The host and or guests may personally own securities, digital assets, or other investment vehicles mentioned on this podcast. Neither the host nor guests of the show are compensated for their participation, and no referral fees are paid to or received by any host or guest for clients, listeners, or similar interests. Investments involve risk, and unless otherwise stated, are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor, tax professional, insurance professional, and or legal professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.